Hi everyone and welcome to our second video on capital investment decisions and the time values money. And in this video we're going to focus specifically on the accounting rate of return. So let's first define the accounting rate of return or again the accrual accounting rate of return. So you may see it as the ARR or you may see it as the AARR. It's the measure of profitability that measures the effect of an investment on a company's accrual based income, not the net cash inflows. And we're going to have a, a formula here, of course, for this, for this um, model. But with the accounting rate of return, we're going to have one model or one formula, but there are many different forms of the formula. So we're going to introduce all of those to you now. So the first form of our formula is to take the average annual operating income from the asset and divide that by the initial investment. So that what this is actually calculating is the average rate of return over the asset's entire life. Now this again is one form of the accounting rate of return. Now notice we're dividing by the initial investment. The accounting rate of return uses the initial investment as the denominator for all three of these forms I'm about to show you. So the next form looks like this. So there's another way we can calculate the numerator in form one, which is the average annual operating income from the asset. We can take the average annual net cash inflow and subtract the annual depreciation expense. Now again, this is just another form of the same equation, so it just depends on what you're given in an exercise or a problem, depending on what form you use. The third form, again, we're changing the numerator. We can actually take the total net cash inflows from the asset, subtract total depreciation on the asset, and get that sum, divide by the useful life. All of that is the numerator, so keep that in mind. All of this information here is the numerator, and you still need to divide that by the initial investment. Now, before we move on and look at an example, I want to talk just briefly about this number right here. Total depreciation on the asset. So let's think about that. Total depreciation. So if we depreciate an asset, the total depreciation will actually end up being the cost of the asset, unless there's residual value. If there is residual value, remember we don't depreciate an asset below its residual value. So the total depreciation on an asset will be its cost minus residual value, if there is any residual value. If it doesn't make mention of a residual value in the ex exercise or problem you're working on, that probably means there's zero residual value and the total depreciation will equal the cost of the asset. So here's the first example. Engineered Products is shopping for new equipment. Managers are considering two investments. Equipment manufactured by Atlas cost $1 million and will last for five years and has no residual value. The Atlas equipment will generate annual operating income of $160,000. Equipment manufactured by Vera's cost $1.2 million and will remain useful for six years. It promises annual operating income of $240,500 and its expected residual value is $100,000. Which equipment offers the highest ARR, the accounting rate of return? So I'd like for you to push pause in your player now. Pick which form or portions of each form that you need to calculate the accounting rate of return for each one of these. Once you've found them and determined which one would be the better investment, come back and we'll see how you did. So it seems that we could use form one the average annual operating income from the asset divided by the initial investment to figure out the accounting rate of return. In this case, for Atlas, it would be 16%, and for Vera's, it would be 20%. So obviously, Vera's is the better of the two. We have a higher accounting rate of return here. But that really doesn't tell us if it's a good investment for us, specifically the company that we're looking at because we don't know what their required rate of return is. So if the company's required rate of return on investments like this is 25%, neither one of these would be an appropriate investment for us. If our required rate of return is 18%, 
then Vera's would be an appropriate investment. Okay, let's try one more example. Here we have Mike's Hardware. They're adding a new product line that will require an investment of $1,454,000. Managers estimate that this investment will have a 10-year life and generate net cash inflows of $310,000 the first year, $280,000 the second year, and $240,000 each year thereafter for eight years. So we computed the payback period earlier for Mike's Hardware. Now we're computing the ARR for the investment. So I think we determined under the payback period that this was a good investment. So let's see if ARR tells us the same thing or if we can even determine it by the ARR with this information. So pick which form you need. We're going to use the original form of the ARR right now. So under the original form, we have three equations. Pick which one or pieces of each one that you need to calculate the accounting rate of return under the original method. Come back and we'll take a look and see how you did. So under the original accounting rate of return method, it looks like we needed form three of our equation. And because this was um, unequal cash flows, we had to add them all up to get the total net cash inflow from the asset. Then we subtracted the total depreciation of the asset. In this case, it was the total costs because it didn't mention anything about residual value. So if it had, right here is where you would subtract the residual value. So in other words, you would have had $1,454,000 minus something. In this case, it's minus zero. So it's actually there. We just didn't put it there. But minus zero or whatever the residual value is to get the total depreciation on the asset. Then we divide all of that by the useful life. In this case, it was 10 years. Then we divide that by the initial investment because we're using the original accounting rate of return. And we find that the accounting rate of return is 7.3%. Unfortunately, we can't really determine if this is a good investment or not because they don't give us the required rate of return. So for the company, we would need to compare this with the required rate of return to determine if it's a good investment. If it's higher than our required rate of return, it would be a good investment. If it's lower, then it would not be a good investment.